Welcome back to our video here on avforums.tv. This is part two of our Calman look, and uh, we're now going to have a look at version four of the software. Uh, myself and David are quite excited to see this as well because we use Calman on a daily basis for our reviews. So tell us about the software initially and then what you can actually marry the software into. Okay. Well, with Calman 4, we've been taking a lot of feedback from version 3 um, and listening to the users. We've been working on this for about six months, and some of the feedback we were getting um, is to make the product easier, make it faster, less steps, uh, more intuitive for people that are less experienced. Um, and that's initially how we built version 3 as well. So we're taking the same progress with version 4. Uh, but we're also still working with industry experts, um, the top guys out of ISF, THX. Um, they're helping us uh, go through some of the processes to make sure that it addresses the needs for the pro calibrator as well as the enthusiast. So uh, it's a whole new design, a whole new look compared to version 3. So maybe you can go through some of the, the, the great new steps that we've got here. Yes, with version 4, uh, one of the things we've done is we've completely uh, chose a new charting engine, a new graphics package, and the idea is that the engine is much, much quicker. So if we go up and we do a series of readings, you can see that it sequences across very, very quick through the patterns. Um, the interface is much, much more intuitive. I can go up here that if I don't like a line chart and I want it to bar chart, I can go over and change properties and say that I want a bar chart or I want the bar chart to be horizontal or vertical. And so it's really easy for the user to select the type of interfaces or the types of data that they're, they're um, accustomed to looking at. Um, one of the main advantages with version 4 is to be able to talk to the display device or the video processors themselves. Um, traditionally, CalMan has been focused on talking to all the meters, all the pattern generators on the market. But if you start looking long term, what's the next piece in the chain that we need to talk to or control? And it's the display or the video processor. And so version 4 is paying specific attention to that. And the idea is, if we come in here and we look at our normal RGB chart, the goal, like for here at 70%, our RGB is balanced, so our white is balanced, but we see, for instance, here, green is too high, red is too high, green is too high here, um, like at 30%. So I'm going to show an example here. So directly controlling the video processor, the display, the calibrator basically just grabs green, drags it down to match red and blue, and by doing so, we're going to write that information back to the display or the video processor, do another reading, confirm that that change happened, and then we're controlling the device directly. And so the, the advantage of that is you're no longer having to use a remote control, having to go through, figure out what button, what service menu, or user menu, is you can control it directly from the interface. Uh, the feedback that we're getting from the industry every time we show this is really, really good. Um, and usually the first thing I ask people is, okay, so if you have a chart like this and you see green is too high, what should you do there? And they're going to say lower green. Well, the natural thing is I just want to grab it and lower it. So it makes it a really, really intuitive interface and really easy to use. So Derek, when, when you're talking about the software talking to the display, there's not many displays at the moment where that can happen. Is, is that the case? That is true. We are working with the display manufacturers, and they're just starting to provide um, connectors, whether it's USB or serial, for us to talk directly to the display. Our goal at EHX um, this coming spring is we're going to have a booth at EHX and be partnering with several display manufacturers and displaying this technology. And I guess in the meantime, while we wait on these new displays coming out with this new new interface there, um, it works at the moment with the video EQ, which we, we showed everybody in the first video. Yes, currently version 4 will work with the video EQ and several of the other video processor manufacturers directly, because that was our first focus. So uh, I guess this is, um, for a pro calibrator like myself, a, a reviewer like myself, this is a dream come true, this, this type of flexibility where we can just drag and drop and, and things change. Yes. One of the questions I get from pro-calibrators are they're concerned that we're trying to replace them in the marketplace. And then my, usually, my first question from them is, okay, how much time do you spend calibrating? Typically two to three hours. Of that two to three, two, two to three hours, what time is spent just getting the, displays, the display close to the standards? They usually say about two-thirds of that time. So if it took them three hours, it took them two hours to just get the display close to what the standards are. And then they've got an hour to do the subjective environmental, making sure cabling is working correctly. And so we asked them, what if you change that around and we're able to get the display really, really close in, say, a half an hour? That gives you a lot more time to do the subjective stuff that somebody hired you to do. So Derek, what we're looking at here on the CIE chart is something that we typically see um, in out-of-the-box measurements that we take when we do a review, a goofy-looking CIE chart where green is oversaturated, yellow is oversaturated, and so on. So 
So how does Carmen Four with uh, a display interface or the video EQ help with the software in this case? Yeah, in this, in this example here, we've measured the display and we see that green is much higher than what the intended standard is. So we say that it's oversaturated. So in this interface, talking to the display or the video processor, all the calibrator has to do is grab this green, drag it down to the standard, drop it. We will make right back to the changes to the display itself or the video processor, and now green is calibrated to that standard. So it would normally take several hours within a video processor you can do with just a simple drag and click. Now Derek, we've seen attempts in the past at, at trying to automate the whole calibration process and I guess you can't 100% take the human out, out of the process but trying to get there in some some respects is is the end goal and it looks like that you've managed to to get there so are the manufacturers going to come on board? What, what's the vibe that you're getting at the moment? That's a very good question. Um, and again, it usually comes back to the professional calibrators. They're saying, you know, if you provide a complete automated system, that you're going to be doing away with our job. Um, and our response to them, or even industry and enthusiasts, is our first goal is to give you tools to make the process easier. There's still a lot of subjective choices that as a seasoned pro calibrator or somebody that knows what they're looking at can make. Um, for an example on this one, if I bring green down to where it should be, but I lose a lot of the luminance, maybe that's a choice I have to make. There's always trade-offs. There is no display that is perfect. There are always trade-offs. And so having a completely automated interface where you just press a button, walk away, come back, and it's completely calibrated, um, that's an industry myth. We will get really, really close to that, but I don't think we'll ever have actually able to achieve it until displays are perfect. And if displays are perfect, then there's really no reason to have to calibrate them. Well, uh, Derek, thanks for your time. Uh, right, it's you. re really interesting uh, to see. And uh, come back for more videos on avforums.tv. Or if you have any questions for Derek, myself, or anyone else at Carmen, then uh, please write your responses underneath this video, and uh, we'll do our best to try and answer those questions. Yes, thank you very much.